Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Jürgen Brüder and I'm a senior IT consultant for InfraLovers. And today I talk about doing blue-green deployments with HashiCorp Nomad and HashiCorp Waypoint. HashiCorp Nomad is not only a lightweight alternative to Kubernetes, it's simple to use, easy to set up and very scalable. I use it on many customer projects and in my home lab here as well to host applications big and small. You could say it's kind of my favorite container orchestrator. So there's just one downside that I have with it and that is when I deploy an application on Nomad that uses a blue-green deployment approach, I need to manually interact with Nomad to switch to the newly deployed version. I'm gonna show you in a second what I mean with that. And if there is something, you know, that I do not like in a DevOps and cloud native world, it's doing stuff manually, right? So automate everything. Just in case uh, you do not know what a blue-green deployment is. So in a blue-green deployment, we have a version one deployed on our target infrastructure. And once we are ready for an update and we want to deploy version two, uh, version two would be deployed there as well. In a classic deployment scenario, version one would be overwritten by version two. However, in a blue-green deployment world, we will deploy version two alongside of version one, run our tests on version two until we are absolutely happy that version two is ready for production and user traffic. And once we are happy with version two, we just switch to version two and version one will be deleted, right? So in case anything should go wrong with version two, we can always roll back to version one. But once we are totally happy with version two, version one will be removed. And this is what we will look at today. First of all, what is HashiCorp Nomad? HashiCorp Nomad is a container and virtual machine orchestrator by the company. HashiCorp, you can see the website here, it's nomadproject.io. And it's a very simple, easy to use container orchestrator. HashiCorp Waypoint. HashiCorp Waypoint is HashiCorp's answer to tools like Spinnaker or Harness. It is a management tool for deployments. Deployments usually go through various life cycles, like a build phase, a deploy phase, and then a testing and release phase. And Waypoint is the tool to design these steps. It has support for Kubernetes, Amazon EC2, and of course, HashiCorp Nomad as well, which we will be using. What do we need to make this happen? First of all, we need a running Nomad cluster with Docker installed on the host and Waypoint installed inside the Nomad cluster. I have already prepared that. So this is the dashboard of my Nomad cluster. You can see two jobs running in here, Waypoint static runner and Waypoint server. So the Waypoint software is already installed inside of Nomad running as containers in my Nomad container cluster. I can also access the dashboard from this Waypoint server which I have here in this browser tab and you can see not much is happening in here we don't have any projects yet but we will change that right away. We will deploy a simple Node.js web application that will be serving a static website on port 8080. All we need to do to prepare this application for deployments is to add a docker file uh, to the directory which we already have here, right? So Waypoint will read in this Docker file and then build the Docker container during its build phase. This application is publicly available to you. If you want to give it a go, you can find it on GitHub. The app shows you specific info about your browser and can have a different background color. Very good to showcase different versions of the same app, as you can, for example, switch the background colors between version 1 and 2. However, this will work with any valid app and Docker file. Just be sure to adjust the port in your Nomad job template if your application serves under different port. To configure this blue-green deployment pipeline, I need two files. One will describe the Nomad jobs. These are the instructions to the Nomad cluster that tell Nomad how it should run our containerized application. 
Additionally to that file, we will also need a file describing the Waypoint pipeline. Both files have already been prepared by me in this directory. Let's take a look. You can see I have the files from the GitHub repo in there. There is my Docker file. There is the uh, Nomad job description file. The Carlos JavaScript file contains the JavaScript application, the Node.js application. Index.html is the front end of our Node.js application, a package.json file because Node.js needs that to work properly. And last but not least, a waypoint.hcl file. HCL is short for HashiCorp configuration language, and this contains the waypoint pipeline configuration. This is the content of the Docker file. It was developed by my dear colleague Martin Buchleitner. As you can see, it simply copies the colors.js file and the index.html file into the Docker image and then starts the colors.js app. So let's take a short look at the colors.js file. Bunch of JavaScript code in here that creates that web application. Up here in line four, we have a variable definition where we can define the background color of that application. Currently, I have set it to orange. And as you've seen earlier, the application had a orange background. Here it is using the orange background for the Next deployment that we will do, we will choose a different color. The waypoint.hcl file contains the configuration for our waypoint project, the pipeline configuration, so to say. The colors-app.nomad.tpl file contains the configuration for the Nomad cluster, so for the specific application that we want to deploy. Let's take a look at both files together. The waypoint.hcl file contains a configuration for the project name, which is colors app. And here we have the different stages of our pipeline. We got the build stage starting here with the green highlighted brackets. We got the deploy stage down here. And at the very end, we got the release stage. So our pipeline will have three stages, a build stage, a deploy stage and a release stage. In the build stage, we have instructed Waypoint to build a Docker image from that Docker file that is included in our working directory. And this Docker image will be published to our local Docker image registry. The deploy phase will read out that colors-app.nomad.tpl file with the instructions for the Nomad cluster. Once the deployment is done, it will move on to the release stage. In the release stage, we use the Nomad plugin of Waypoint to check the task group inside of Nomad to see if the deployment was a success. We have defined a health check inside our colors-app.nomad file, which the release stage will be checking on. And once that health check becomes green, healthy, our test succeeds, so to say, it will switch from the old version to the newly deployed version automatically for us. Let's take a look at the colors-app.nomad.tpl file next. This is pretty much your standard Nomad job definition, we're starting off with the job stanza, giving the job a name. Colors is the name we chose. We will deploy that in our data center one. I only have that one data center, that one Nomad cluster. So that's the only option I have. And here we define that task group I mentioned earlier with the name of app. If an update should happen inside the task group, it will uh, move on to do a blue green deployment. These options that you can see here are telling Nomad to do a blue green deployment with that. We have set our health check as well. For this demo, we will simply check the task states. So basically checking if the new deployed version is running in a real world scenario, you would have a more sophisticated test right there. What is the task that we want to deploy? We want to deploy a Docker container and it can find that Docker container 
add that path and you can see that this is not a hard coded value. We actually get some variables from the waypoint pipeline forwarded into this template file, which gives us the exact name of that Docker image, that artifact that was just built in the build phase of waypoint. And we can define the tag of the last build version. Additionally, I'm putting in an environment variable inside the container that tells the application to start on port 8080. The most important bit here is that we set that canary argument. This will instruct Nomad to keep the old version of the deployment until the new version has successfully deployed. Otherwise, Nomad would delete the old deployment before starting the new one, right? So the classic deployment approach, which we don't want to have, we want to do blue-green deployments. Just adding that canary argument here is enough for Nomad to understand that we want to do a blue-green deployment. Once you have all the files set up, you just switch into the directory which contains the waypoint.hcl file and run waypoint in it. This will set up our Colors app project inside the waypoint server. You will see the Colors app project inside your waypoint dashboard. If I open that up, you will see that no deployments have been run just yet. So let's deploy that orange version that I showed you earlier. All we need to do to run the deployment is run another waypoint command. Waypoint up will read that waypoint.hcl file and then it will build the Docker image, it will communicate with the Nomad cluster and it will check our health check to switch from the old to the new version. As you can see, Docker image is being built, being pushed to the registry, deploying starts, and then the release happens. As you can see here, we actually get an error message, which is expected. Our release stage wants to switch to the new version and delete the old version. However, I don't have an old version yet, right? I just deployed version one. So this will clear up once we do the second deployment of version two. If we check our waypoint dashboard again, we can actually see that version one is running in there now. We also get that error message from before, but we also get a URL that will get us to that deployed application. If I click on that, it will open that URL in my browser and you can see here is the orange application again, running on my Nomad cluster and made accessible by waypoint. We can also check the Nomad cluster to see, let me just refresh. Very quickly, as you can see, there is now a Carlos job running in there. If I open it up, you can see it's running, it's healthy. It's using some resources, but Waypoint seemed to have done its job exactly as we wanted to. All right, so deploying, check. Now we move on to deploying the updated version. For that, I will update the content of the colors.js file to use a different color. I will do that right here on the terminal. As you can see, orange is the current color and I will switch that to a different color. Let's pick green. Let me just save that file. All right. Obviously, this didn't change anything on our currently running version, right? We will need to run the pipeline again to deploy version two. As you can see, we're still on version one right here. So let's do that. All I need to do to accomplish that is to run waypoint up again. It will realize that there have been changes to the colors.js file and build a new image. We are running now version two of this deployment. It deploys the new version to Nomad. And now, as you can see, the release stage is actually working. It's now monitoring that new deployment until the health check becomes green. This just happened. So release stage is successful. It switches over to version two. And we now have two URLs actually, one specifically for the version we have just deployed, version two, and one that will always show the most recently deployed version. Let's check that out very quickly. As you can see, if we load that page again, 
it has now become green. And if I'm feeling like blue, right, I just go back into my colors.js file, change the color to blue, run waypoint up again, building another Docker image, deploying the application again, checking the health check, it's waiting until the newly deployed deployment becomes healthy on the Nomad cluster. And once that is done, release stage gets green. And we can see a blue version of the app is our version 3. To reiterate, Waypoint builds the Docker image, deploys it to Nomad and then checks for the new version to become active before triggering the promote inside of Nomad. However, there's one thing I would want to optimize for a professional project. I would not want to build a new Docker image every time this pipeline runs. And I also do not want to trigger Waypoint manually, right? So I told you we will automate everything, but obviously I had to run Waypoint up to make this happen. So how would I solve the first issue with building a new Docker image every time we run Waypoint up? I would create a Git repository and connect it to a continuous integration system like GitLab CI or GitHub Actions. This repo would contain the app and the Docker file, same repo we just saw earlier. Whenever a change happens in that repo, a new Docker image is being built and pushed to a container registry. I would not use Waypoint to build the image directly, I would just reference the result in side a docker registry somewhere. Once that image is built and in a registry, I would trigger the waypoint up command. The build stage would only download the recently built image, but not actually build it. The deploy and the release stages would stay the same. Why would I do that? This way you can re-trigger deployments without rebuilding the same image over and over again, right? We didn't see that yet, but if I do no changes to the image, Waypoint would still rebuild that image, right? So that's not optimal. It also gives you the advantage of storing the image in a Docker registry, which might take advantages of security scans and so on and so forth, right? Also, you make the image available to other people in your company. Here it will only be available on that Waypoint server. Thank you very much for watching this video. This was Blue Green Deployments with HashiCorp Nomad and Waypoint. See you in the next one.